Hey guys, how you doing? Big John with Jay Custom Builds. Hope you guys are doing well. Today I'm gonna actually work on my brother-in-law's bike, his 2013 Softail Heritage. I'm going to take the, let me show you. So I'm going to take his top exhaust off so I can take that cover off and change the, uh, the uh, clutch cable, which is right here. This one is obviously a little bit too short. And so I'm going to take that off. I'm possibly going to put the caliper on there and uh, probably put the plugs and the new wires on there and get closer to getting this girl finished. Start assembling the whole front. I got to clean up some of the chrome that's over here. His light bar is right there. So I actually have to adjust the, um, the belt as well but i have to put the bike on the ground for that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the fall away on that first and then i'm going to do the rear wheel so once i get the clutch cable on there then i'll be able to put the uh, idle and the throttle cable back on and at least have those in so i can put the gas tank back down and uh, get this girl closer to being finished the only thing holding me up right now on the top is the master cylinder was really really messed up it was just crumbling from you know the brake fluid getting on the paint and i guess it just dried on it so i'm tr i been wanting to find some paint i think i'm going to get the por 15 which is a semi gloss which i believe is this because i don't want to tell my brother he needs a ma another master cylinder just because of the paint because that one actually works good those things are a few hundred dollars so i don't want to I don't even want to ask him when I could just do my best to try to paint that. And if it doesn't come out right, then, you know, we'll go from there. But I'm going to do the best I can on that. Hey, guys, I also wanted to mention, if you guys have not entered my current giveaway for the 2009 Ultra Classic and the 2010 Street Glide, my tickets right now are $75, but I am raising them up now to $100 because I'm going to be donating $15 to Tunnels to Towers for every item sold. $85 is going to go to the business so that I can try to save up and get another bike so I can keep this going. Anyways, I will show videos of the bikes and I will touch more on Tunnels to Towers. If you want to learn more about it, you can head over to T2T, the letter T, the number two, the letter T, Dot org so you can learn more about it. I have added all the information on my website. You can check that out at jcustombills.com. Anyways, let's get started on this video. So there's a couple of half inch uh, nuts here on two bolts that are sitting inside this bracket oh no they're actually bolts taking these guys off so that i could take that top bracket out or i'm sorry take the exhaust off for the rear exhaust pipe this is actually the front this is the rear so let me get the socket here so i can take those two off get my stool so now you have two, you have two half inch bolts right here. I've already sprayed them down. Didn't spray them down enough, huh, Loki? There we go. Depending on how these look, I might change them. I might just change these. Let's get this one off really quick. It's kind of easier if you ha either have a swivel or you unplug the lines, right? Unplug these lines, but you don't always want to unplug them. So it's better if you have like a, a swivel on the front of this. Let's see if I can take this girl off. What's holding this beast? Is there something else holding it? 
it seems to be being held on by something else. And where's the other one? Right there. So it appears these are both welded on. So I'm going to have to take the fronts off too. So that's why the top one wasn't dropping. I know that they they, ha they bolt on in the bracket together back there, but they're actually welded together. So they did a good job too on how they welded them together. I mean they. I don't know if they came like that from the factory or what. Now I gotta take these guys off down here. I mean, it's gonna work out better because this would have still been in my way. Really saves a lot of time. So what you wanna do is get your mounting brackets off like that. Man, these, are, these are nice. They did a really good job on these. You know, this footboard might be a problem getting this one off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen the one in the back and I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm gonna take the one in the back, the rear off, and I'm gonna just loosen the front. Cause that, this bracket right here keeps this from go, rocking down and being able to pull it out. So get back on the ground here. Hi Leo, hi Leo, hi. All right, guys, I'm gonna take that footboard off. I'm gonna turn you guys off for a second. Okay, guys, so I got that off. I had to take the front exhaust off and then uh, disconnect the O2 sensors from the front and from the back. Hi, Bush. This is my new baby right here. This is Loki. Say hi, Loki. Say hi, Bush. So now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to drain the transmission and I might have to let the bike down and move the stand just so I could drain it. I'm gonna try to see if I could find the, the plug for it right now. All right guys, so I already drained the pan. I had to take the bike off the stand and lay down. You gotta pay attention to this too, because these two are short, and I believe the rest are long. So four are long and two are short. So. Oh, hi baby. So can you guys see this? So what you need to do is you need to disconnect this here so you can actually spin this out. And I'll show you guys how I normally do this. That's how I do it. And that you don't really have to take out, but I'm going to, I'm going to take it out anyway so I can inspect everything. So. So now you get a 9 16th and you just start spinning this out, which I'm gonna do right now. And that's why I got the pan down there. What do I do with my rag? Where's my rag, Loki? What did I do with my rag? Oh, here it is. Here it is, Papa's, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna get near me right now because Papa's dirty. Papa's hands are dirty. Everything looks good in here. 
as far as I know. Tra transmission oil was super, super clean. It looked really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have to spin the clutch cable. So I'm gonna make sure it doesn't flop around and like, you know, hit the fender and stuff. So, take it out that way. Sorry, Bubbus, didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Bubbus. Sounds like I hit the cowbell. So now I'm gonna get a 916 and I'm gonna start spinning this out. Yep, 916. I should have, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna put a couple of bolts back in here or just set it right there like that just so I can start spinning this out. There it is. So all you have to do is press it back in like that and just hold it. And you'll see that the clutch is actually the whole thing is spinning all the way on the other side. Or not all the way on the other side, but right where the center piece is there. Yeah, it's actually, the whole thing's actually spinning. You know, I don't even know if I actually got Jesse a, a gasket for this. So, I might have to just order it tonight and go get it take this out push that in a little bit and yeah now I could just kind of cover this and spin it out and there it is be careful with this I mean this gasket looks okay but I'm going to change it because it's probably hard. I'm going to clean the inside of this because it looks like there's... Watch, look. If you if you look right here as I wipe away, can you see that? So I'm going to clean all this up, then lube it up really good. The ball bearings in there seem to be working pretty good, but I'm just going to clean it all up really good. And uh, get a new gasket and put it all in. I like cleaning stuff up before I put it back on. So anyways, let's check this gasket. Oh, yeah, the gaskets. Gasket was okay still, but I'm gonna replace it. If you're gonna do something like this, might as well just do it right, man. Just replace everything that you need to replace. And uh, so that's, that's good like that. And what you wanna do, what you wanna do is you always see where the clutch cable is you always want to follow the same path if it was fine before it was removed or taken out you always want to follow the same path so whatever way you pull it out that's the way you want to pull the other one back in so i'm actually going to take that one out get the new one and measure it and make sure before i install the new one that the new one is actually three to four inches longer than that one so i'm gonna do that now so <clears throat> i see the way it's routed but there's a zip tie right here that i have to cut in order to get it out and you might have to do that yeah. it's in there pretty tight there it is so following the path it's going right in between there in between those lines and comes up from there and there we go my baby my pretty little loki my baby you're so cute you're so cute little papas and your mean you're so cute my baby i love this little guy this is my new baby say hi loki loki say hi say hi papas all right so let's get the other clutch. There's my little Leo. Let's get the other clutch and measure it. <sighs> so in this case, guys, I'm just going to measure the, the entire length of the cable because I need three inches longer or four inches longer than what I currently have. So here's the new cable. So from there to there, 
it's almost the same length. And then you can see, you can see that it's literally four inches longer, five inches longer, which is exactly what I wanted. So this is perfect. So this cable is still good for somebody that just needs a cable. I don't like putting old stuff on bikes, but if somebody says, hey man, I need a stock cable for a soft tail, there's one right here. Okay guys, so I cleaned all this up and I cleaned in here. You wanna make sure you take the O-ring off of here. It comes with a new O-ring right here and that O-ring sits right inside of there. I'm not sure if you could see that little groove in there, but it sits right inside of there. And I already put the boot over it so that it can cover this and keep this all dry or cleaned when with, uh, you know, with bad weather. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out and stick that in there first. There, now. Now I can actually spin this on. I wanna make sure you get it on there straight too. So I'm gonna put this back together. I had to literally take everything apart to, uh, to get this in there. And so I took it apart so that I could clean everything inside. I'm gonna put a little bit of transmission fluid on here, just a little bit, just so that I could loop, you know, everything a little bit. And then I'm gonna get this back in there. So that'll move freely like that. And then I'm gonna get this pin back in there. But when you get it back in there, you have to rotate it. You gotta be careful with these things too because they, they will pop, they will slip. So I got it back on. Now the fun part is gonna be to get it in and turn it. You wanna face these two clips over here on this side. You do not want it on the opening. So I'm just gonna try to spin it. Now I gotta get this one to pinch a little bit to slide in. See how it popped out? So I'm trying to do it so I can actually show you guys, but it's not. Not easy. There it is. So you want to make sure that it's in there and you want to make sure that it's facing in or down. So I'm just going to spin it just a little bit more right there. So it's, it's actually locked in place right there. You want to check it. You want to make sure that that is okay. Then you want to get a little bit of grease on the head of that. So this grease actually came with it. So you wanna get this right here on the head of it, just like that. And then you wanna get this guy in there, just like this, and it locks in place. Then you wanna pull this back and get that in there and let it spin around just like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this gasket. I already cleaned the bolts and everything. So I'm gonna get this gasket. I'm gonna put it back on there. And I'm actually gonna slide the head of the clutch through here. Cause that's exactly how it goes. I'm gonna turn this wheel this way. And I'm gonna pull this clutch all the way through here. Cause all this has to come up just like that this goes on just like that so i'm gonna, I'm gonna put some loctite on these bolts like i said i cleaned the bolts up already get a little bit of loctite on them get this baby back on there so these have dot little dowel pins in there for you to get them in one on each side and then you just gotta angle this and get that down like that get this in there 
turn it with your fingers or with the Allen. I just want to get one on there so that it won't pop off again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So these go in anywhere between, um, I just do 10 pounds. It's supposed to be a hundred or nine pounds. It's supposed to be 120 inch pounds, which is like, I think nine or 10 pounds. You want to do a cross pattern too. So this has 10 pounds on it. So let's just go 10 pounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't wanna go more than 10 pounds. This is the last one. And you know me, I like to double check everything. So now you can start crossing over every other one and then jump here, jump here, and here, and this one. And that's it. So the new clutch cable's in there. So if you want a clutch that's four inches longer than your stock on a 2013 Heritage, I have the Barnett part numbers. I'll go ahead and put those in the description when I download the video. I'm just gonna clean up this chrome a little bit. I'm gonna put these, finish these fuel lines back in there after I get the exhaust back on. I pulled them out so I can get the exhaust back on. I mean, get the exhaust off. I'm gonna order new nuts for the exhaust and new, uh, new bushings. I gotta take these bushings out. Oh yeah, they're, they just fell out. These little guys right here. So I gotta get new ones. These things are all crispy. You wanna clean in here really good. Inspect the, uh, the uh, studs that are in there. Make sure that they're good. Inspect everything while you're here. Make sure there's no leaks or anything around in there. I'm just gonna clean all this up here a little bit before I put the floorboard back on it. And now that I have access to this, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and change the oil. I've already drained the tranny. Um, the tranny fluid was super, super clean. It's like he had just gotten an oil change because it was pretty clean. Everything looks good. The exhaust looks great. So we're gonna put new lock nuts on the studs there. So I gotta grab four of those, put his exhaust back on, but I'm gonna clean up in here, get these lines on, these two on after I get the exhaust back on. Everything in here looks good. I wiped everything down. Yeah, other than that, everything's looking pretty damn good. So you guys have a, uh, a great rest of your evening. And uh, I'll be back either tomorrow. I got to find the exhaust gaskets for the top of the uh, exhaust. And I know I got some new wing nuts, or not wing nuts, but the new uh, flange nuts for, uh, for the studs, for the exhaust studs. And then uh, I'll get the exhaust back on. I'll get the floorboard back on. And, uh, oh, I wanna get the throttle and the, the um, idle cables back in tomorrow. I'll get the gas tank back down and bolted back up. And then I'll start putting the front together so I can do the follow away on it. So, hey guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna be doing the, uh, the idle and throttle cable and connecting the clutch cable next and doing the follow away. I'm not sure what order I'm gonna do that in. I picked up the gaskets from work and the, uh, the nuts that I needed to put the, uh, put the exhaust back on. I inspected the studs on the heads and they're really good. So yeah, I just gotta slap it back together. Hey guys, I also wanted to mention my, I've still got my giveaway going on with the 2010 Street Glide and the 2009 Ultra Classic. And if you know anybody that's interested in winning a Harley, all you gotta do is head over to my website, jcustombuilds.com, purchase any item. The details are all on the website. You can learn more about it. And we are now supporting Tunnels to Towers for every item sold.
We're sending $15 to Tunnels to Towers. I really appreciate your guys' support. And if you like these videos and any of my others, I invite you to please hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon. That way you're notified anytime I drop a new video. So I am working from home now full time. I'm no longer working at Oakland Harley. So I will be able to download and make more videos throughout the week. My plan is to get this giveaway going, get both of these bikes given away. So if you know anybody that's interested in winning a Harley, please share this video with anybody you know. And if you're interested in supporting our troops and our our disabled veterans you can buy a hat or a t-shirt and $15 of that money is going to go to Tunnels to Towers to support them and if you're interested in learning any more about my giveaway or Tunnels to Towers you can head over to my website and learn more about it there other than that you guys have yourself a great weekend always remember to ride safe take care of everything you do and God bless